dissipated. See, that's where I get you guys. All right, go ahead. How's it going, man? Uh, pretty good. Pretty nice of you to ask me. Yeah, did you check that crazy uh, Oilers game last night? Insane, right? Oh, yeah, I was sick. Uh, Connor McDavid had a hat trick. Yeah, insane. Did you, uh, I heard you went to the lake over the weekend. That was pretty cool, right? Yeah, I did. I got to take the canoe out. I also saw a wild moose. Uh, by the way, did you make it to the Drake concert last uh, night? I couldn't because last night the, that new Ryan Gosling movie came out. Crazy good. It only cost me two tunes. Cheapest tickets I've ever had. Wow, I just spent all the money in my pocket for my ticket. It's been pretty cold though lately. Yeah, it's freezing and I've had to wear my took everywhere I go. We should get some tennis to warm ourselves up. Yeah, I'm gonna go get a double-double. It's important for us as college students to visit other countries because we gain a certain knowledge and understanding that just can't be taught in the classroom. So me and my partner have spent 20 hours, 20 hours researching our country. So today, we're going to the great white north, the last best west, that's right, we're going to Canada. So first, my partner is going to start us off with two foods from Canada, then I'm going to talk about two celebrations, and then we're each going to split up the destination. So let's start off with my partner and his two foods. Okay, hi, my name is Aiden, and I have two foods I want to tell you about. First, we have poutine, and then we have uh, maple syrup. So according to Davida Arnovich in 2016, uh, this is a Canadian dish made of French fries topped with cheese curds and gravy. Uh, it first appeared in rural Quebec snack bars and was widely popularized across Canada beyond the 1990s. Poutine, poutine may be found anywhere from fine dining menus at top restaurants to fast food chains, and it has become a symbol of Quebec and Canadian cuisine and culture. So take a look at the image behind me. I know it's a lot to take in, there's a lot of different you know, ingredients and combination of flavors, but that's what makes this you know, so unique. So pay attention to the fries that are dominating the bowl, that's like the main course. Then the cheese that's like crevice throughout. And then also the gravy that's just drizzled on top to complete it. It gives a unique texture, but also it's just reliable and also like very accessible. So then again, you can eat it on a sizzling hot pan at a five-star restaurant, or you can just pick it up at any fast food restaurant in Canada. And this just makes it unique all across the board. Secondly, I have maple syrup. So according to an article by Leo H. Warner in 2006, maple, oh, sorry, can we go back? <laughs> what this reminds me of is, um, is actually America. So even though we're pretty close, we don't have a lot of the same cuisine, but then again, we are neighbors. So why this reminds me of America is because of just the different things in it. Even though it's a different dish, we have French fries, which you can find here at In-N-Out or Jack in the Box. We also have um, cheese, which, you know, it's pretty close to, Canada is pretty close to Wisconsin, so I can see the connection there. And then also we have gravy, and you know, of course, that reminds me of Thanksgiving, so. That's what it reminds me of, okay. Back to um, maple syrup. So according to an article by Leo H. Warner in 2006, maple syrup and maple sugar products are made by blowing down the sap of maple trees. Canada is the world's leading producer and exporter of the maple products accounting for 75% of the global market. The saying as Canadian maple syrup demonstrates the degree to which maple syrup products and production are associated with uh, the Canadian identity. The leaf of a sugar maple, for example, is at the center of the national flag of Canada. So take a look at the image behind me. Now this one, I can't say much because it's, off, it's more simple, you know, there's not a lot to say about it, but I just want you to imagine what it could do. So on the base, on the surface, there's just the different hues of red and oranges, but it's waiting to be broken out of the bottle. And you know, you can just imagine it oozing, you know, over whatever breakfast food it may be. Um, also, it's, it's, it's different, you know, it's not a main course, it's a condiment that you add to food to like enhance the flavor, so. It's not a liquid or a solid, really. It's kind of more plasma, pl like plasma-like. So, yeah, that's <laughs> that's basically what it is. But what this reminds me of is um, family and friends. So, usually when like after a long night, you always gotta go to some place that serves breakfast food, and then it just offers like a sense of nostalgia. And then, yeah, that's pretty much all I can say. Now I'm gonna hand it off to Connor. So I have uh, two Canadian celebrations. The first one being Canada Day and the second one being the Calgary Stampede. So let's start off with Canada Day. So according to Hayday in 2017, uh, Canada Day is a national holiday in Canada that's celebrated every July 1st. And it celebrates the date that the British North American Act was enacted in 1867. And this act united the three colonies of Canada at the time, the United Canada, uh, Nova Scotia, and uh, New Brunswick. 
and it created the uh, modern Canadian system as we know it. And for most of its history, it's known as the Minion Day, and it was really uh, centered in the capital of Ottawa. However, in uh, 1987, an act of parliament was passed that changed the name of the Minion Day to Canada Day. And now it's widely celebrated all throughout Canada, and you can find big celebrations in cities like uh, Vancouver, Toronto, Montreal, just all the major cities throughout Canada. So take a look at the image behind me. Notice how the beautiful Canadian flag just spans across the amazing Parliament building of Canada. And if you look up a little, all the way to the top, notice how the spire just is just this beautiful red, and on the very top, the flagpole is this just beautiful gold, and how the Canadian flag is just flying freely through the air. So take a look at the bottom of the image. And just look at all the family just enjoying the beauty of the parliament building and the flag. They should, they're just still so proud of being part of Canada. What this reminds me of is actually here in the United States. I love watching a lot of the 4th of July celebrations, especially the, uh, the light displays on the White House. And I just remember seeing the red, white, and blue span across the White House yeah. and having Susan marches in the background. So now that I told you about Canada today, I'm going to tell you about the Calgary Stampede. So according to LifeR in 2010, uh, Calgary Stampede is a 10-day event that takes place every July in Calgary, Alberta. It started in 1886 as an agricultural fair and eventually included a, um, a rodeo that was started in 1912 and is one of the largest rodeos in the entire world. And today it includes, of course, agricultural fairs, so many of the different agricultural groups in Canada will come to the Calgary Stampede. and includes things like bareback riding, uh, bull riding, and just anything you can think of with horses and bulls. So if you take a look at the image behind me, just look at those beautiful horses. Like how the sunlight just make, burns, the, like makes them turn gold almost, and just the beautiful sun. And look above them, above, the, above them, and just the cowboy with the reins, just trying his best to keep his lead on those horses, trying to stir them around the stadium. And if you look way above that, just look at the stands and how they're just full with people. Just like, there's only standing room, just how big this event truly is. What this reminds me of is actually those old spaghetti western movies with John Wayne or Clint Eastwood. I just remember him and his, them and their horses just like riding across the plains with their big old cowboy hats just trying to save the day. So now that I've told you about my uh, two Canadian